Thank you all for coming. Reminds me of my classroom. Everybody kind of moves to the back and um, hides in the back. <clears throat> and that's okay because I call on folks in the back too. So um, a little bit about how this all got started. So when I first left Harvard way back in 1980, I did a couple of startups and kind of caught the startup fever and then went on to do some other things. And then was talking with a friend and a very dear man, if you had the good fortune to have him as a clinician, you would be one of the luckiest patients alive. His name is Dr. John Roberts, and we've decided to name our first product after him. He's one of the most compassionate, compassionate practitioners in the field of thoracic medicine. So we were chatting, and, and this doctor is completely focused on how to make the patient experience better, okay? And that's a real different focus when you're doing a medical device company. So this is about getting patients out of the hospital faster. As a matter of fact, he's a pretty funny guy. The first slide he always puts up in a presentation is beware of the staff, and he puts up a little staphylococcus, okay? <clears throat> so you want to get patients out of the hospital faster, and you also want the experience, okay, of being treated to be as uh, atraumatic as it can be. So we decided first and foremost to go after a big one in the healthcare industry, which is pneumonia. So we lost some of the slide here. Hmm, okay. So when we're looking at pneumonia, it is a global killer. Our high-risk groups are at both ends of the life spectrum. Children, in particular, are vulnerable. Under the age of five, we lose 1.6 million per year to pneumonia. Worldwide. Worldwide, and certainly more prone to having this issue in developing countries as opposed to the developed world. However, in this country, pneumonia affects a disproportionate number of the elderly. Okay, so what you find is as the lungs fill with fluid, it's very, very difficult to have the power to expel that, okay, at both ends of the spectrum. Incidence of pneumonia in the United States, 5.6 million, and it ranks sixth among the leading causes of death. So let's take a look at the medicine. Currently, if you're young and healthy, you can cough and usually get through bronchitis or pneumonia. If not, a patient has to be intubated, okay? Or in a more long-term situation, they would have a tracheostomy placed. And then suctioning is done to clear the airway. This is a typical scenario of being intubated. So you can see that we have a blue ventilator tube, okay, and uh, coming into the mouth is uh, an area where you can suction at that junction. Now, um, in terms of pneumonia and hospitalization, so here we're starting to look at impacting healthcare cost. We had 1.1 million stays in the most recent data, 2011, which is 36 stays per 10,000 individuals. And it is one of the 10 most expensive conditions with a cost of $10.6 billion for the 1.1 million stays. And it is in the top five for billing to Medicare and Medicaid. So a little bit of a look at the tools of the trade. So this is all of the different, uh, not certainly all, but a, a myriad of the devices that are used when trying to clear the airway. So once a person is intubated, you have to care for the mouth, you have to care for the upper airway, you have to care for the lower airway. So you have all of these different devices you have an average suction catheter, which you see here, and you have what's called a Yankauer, that's an oral suctioning device, and you have a suction swab with mouth moisturizer. So all of these things tending continually to the airway, and it gets 
hard on the clinician, it gets hard on the patient because there are different intervals at which these have to be done. Now, here's where the problem comes in with current technology, okay? Patients with pneumonia are given antibiotics. They get chest physiotherapy and suctioning. However, the current suction catheters only go into the right lung 99% of the time. The current suction catheter simply does not want to go into the left. It's simply the anatomy. It's trying to get around the cardiac notch and get into that left lung. But we don't have a tool for that particular problem. Now, this presents an interesting issue, okay? If we have pneumonia, and this is bacteria, so if you imagine you have a million of these little guys that will sit on the head of a pin. So bacteria are infinitely small, and as the patient turns right to left, if you can't get into the left, you're going to accumulate disease in the left lung, okay? So when these secretions and all of these bugs accumulate in the left lung. We have diminished function in the left lung. We have an increased risk of both barotrauma and volutrauma to the right lung. We have secretions from the left lung that can, of course, as the patient rolls over, recontaminate the right lung. And when the secretions are not drained and antibiotics are given, it's fairly common to have uh, a person develop resistant bacterial strains. So one of the common clinical scenarios is that a patient presents with pneumonia, the sample is started, antibiotics are started, will the patient will improve but then worsen. We have a repeated culture that is obtained, okay, now resistant to several antibiotics, okay, um, including the one that's currently treating the patient, so new, more expensive antibiotics are started. The cycle repeats, and on the third round, the patient will usually end up with a resistant strain of either Serratia, Pseudomonas, or MRSA, and usually does not survive. So now we have the device. Our device has three important attributes that are not available in catheters on the market. It can reliably, and I would say 100% of the time, be directed into either the left or the right lung. We have designed it with two clean cannula on either side of the main suction lumen so that we can deliver sterile fluid without having it touch the contaminated lumen. And although we are not currently working on drug delivery systems, that's sort of a whole different creature in terms of going to the FDA. We are hoping at some point to partner for the delivery of antibiotics. It is thought that by delivering antibiotics, uh, most pneumonias would be taken care of. And finally, our device swivels. So we are keyed so that an operator working here on the patient, when the device uh, the actually the ventilator hole, okay, goes to the left. We know that the uh, suction catheter will go to the left side, and when it turns to the right, the simple 180 degree turn, it's going to enter the right lung. So now I'd like to show you, and let's see if I can get the pointer up here. So you want to watch right here. This, as you can see. Uh, well, I should explain, this is a glass model of the lung, okay? So this is the carina, this would be going into the right lung, this would be going into the left lung, okay? And you can see we have a clear tube in here, and this is a standard suction catheter, so this would be what is currently being done today. So you can see that it's basically not getting further than the carina or the point at which the, the primary bronchi leave the trachea, okay? This is our catheter, so 
again, you can see this is the end of the endotracheal tube. This is the carina. And we easily make it down into the right primary bronchi. Okay. On the left side, once again, With relative ease, we get all the way to the bottom of the left primary bronchi. So that is the device that we have. I have a prototype up here. And um, in summary, while our exact numbers are difficult to obtain, pneumonia is certainly a leading cause of death and expense in the United States. And it is the most common final pathway for many patients to to pass on, whatever their primary disease. And ultimately, we will all need appropriate treatment for pneumonia. And certainly in a young and healthy population, there also looms the specter of bird flu, which can overwhelm the lungs. Okay, so um, that is of concern not only here, but in uh, China, where they deal with a great deal of the bird flu problems. What's next for PC Medical? We have a pipeline of six products. We hope that they will all um, deliver equal value to the medical community and patients alike. So thank you very much. If you have a question, please raise your hand and I'll be over with the microphone. Mike, can you please wait for a sec? Where do you stand in manufacturing this? How far it will be manufactured 100% in the United States. Are you, are you selling them now? We are not selling them right now. We are in pre-production. So we are proving out the tooling, uh, proving out the, uh, well, our validation and verification studies are done. And so we're very close to on the market. We, we I think at this point, are fairly certain that we will be on the market before the end of the year. And what's the size of the market? Oh, it's a big market. Okay. <laughs> do, do, you have proje do you have projections? We do. I didn't bring the business end of it. I just brought the technology end of it. Um, but would happy to talk to you about that. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, two, two quick questions. Sure. OK. Um, one, could you please speak to, I don't know, what, is there an issue of cross-contamination at all? cross-contamination. Between one lung and the other? Well, that's what we're trying to uh, help, help solve. Okay. I mean, that's really the, if we can keep a patient suctioned both right and left, then the hope is that there won't be continued cross-contamination. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, from whatever, you know, I mean, pneumonia gets caused by bacteria, by viruses, by fungi, so. Okay. Also, I'm just curious, and I don't, I think, I don't think I missed this earlier. Can you tell me uh, the rough percentage of people who have, who do get to the point where they need to be, what, intubated? I don't think we have um, exact numbers in terms of people who start with, you know, regular pneumonia, if you will, and then people who have to be intubated. The number of diseases that produce pneumonia, it would have taken the whole presentation to just read them off. Um, pneumonia is, is um, a big player in most disease, and it, yeah, I will say one thing about, uh, and probably one of the things I should have brought uh, up here, is that um, there's a new sort of problem that hospitals are, are realizing, and that's with ventilator-assisted conditions of all sorts. Uh, there's a very large percentage of people on ventilators who um, acquire pneumonia, and it's a, it's a serious problem. It's getting to be like MRSA in institutions. So there's, a, there's just a big ventilator issue um, at large. And um, if I can, before I quit, I just have one thing I want to say. I have my chief designer here. Maya, would you stand? This is one of the design team. So please give her a hand. Okay. Yes. We have uh, one more question, and it was up here. Oh. Hi, Bear. Um, are you, is this something that it, where you're looking at 
things other than pneumonia for this to affect, for example, bronchitis. I used to get the bronchitis and pneumonia together. Is, is this also going to work with that or is it simply designed to work with something like pneumonia where you have to suction out liquid? This, uh, is, this particular device is uh, just for sucking out pneumonia and all the f associated fluids. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, let's all give a round of applause to Janet. <laughs> <laughs>